Who is Greg Flett? Um, a guy lives in Los Angeles, and um, no, that's, that's who I am. I, mean, uh, but I don't understand the question. Who yeah. is it? I'm a uh, can American you tell us, male. Uh, <laughs> A little bit more about Greg Plitt, um, the, fitness, uh, the fitness model. Sure, uh, Greg yeah, the fitness yeah. model never started out to be a fitness model. I, um, you know, right. I went through the life uh, in the military and sports, and I always used the gym for some means. It was never about fitness modeling. Um, I just had a passion for working out. Every time I hit struggles or I was stressed out, I always went to the gym to find solidity there and uh, to work through any kind of stresses. So naturally, I got in shape, um, but uh, it wasn't for, for fitness modeling. It was for military and sports. And then later on, down the road, uh, an agents, agency saw me and said, hey, you should take some pictures. I'm like, oh, I'll try it. And that's how this was born. But it wasn't the starting. I didn't start out, set out for this. It just uh, ended up coming through passion and, and the love of the gym. What is motivation? Motivation for me is that you never have to wonder what if. Um, later in life, the windows of opportunity will always close. As we get older, things are taken from us. Um, but they can never take the memory of us performing our best. So motivation for me is later in life, um, you know, it's hard to take that first step towards greatness in anyone's endeavor. That's the hardest step. But what's harder than that one step is later in life as the windows close and the opportunities cease to exist, thinking back that you could have been great. So I always try to burn the midnight oil right now and give it all I have um, to prevent me from staying awake in the midnight hours, wondering what if. I would, have I always been as charismatic? I would hope so. I would hope so. Um, I think if you do anything in life, you've got to you've got to believe in it. You know, you can't fake it. Um, there's enough there's enough wannabes and copycats in the world. You know, when somebody's original and they really believe in what they're doing, it shows, and it's a breath of fresh air. And I wish the world does more of that. So many people they try to follow other people's paths, and they take the path that's beaten always, instead of the path less traveled that they believe in. And that path less traveled is a harder, steeper, rockier path, but it leads to a greater view and a greater belief in what, who you are. So if you're going to do anything, do it because you want to, because you believe in it. And if that's the reason why you, you, you start that endeavor, you always finish that cross, cross that finish line. Um, I train really, um, you know, the way I train is you know, no different than anybody else, I guess. I never do the same workout twice. I always keep muscle confusion from cardios and, and um, you know, running and skydiving. And, you know, I, I, I train to make the world my playground. So, you know, I always go in there and change up the workout to keep my body guessing. I always challenge myself, uh, whether I'm skydiving or bungee jumping or biking or, you know, running. And I enjoy the physical life. And um, so if I go into the gym, it helps me to, you know, uh, be able to take all this world has to offer in. Um, but, you know, going to the gym, it's not about, like, checking the box, did, you know, pay my dues today. I go in there and I find I, I, it's self-discovery, you know. It's like there's something about that eighth rep when you can't do it, you know, of who you are. When you're pushing, you're trying to get it up, and do we just quit? Do we just rack it? Or do we rack it, drop the weight, and keep going for the burn? Or do we get someone to spot us? Who are we in that adversity? Do we push past it? Do we try to get more out of it, or do we settle? Do we say words like good enough? And if you do say good enough, you're in trouble because you don't know if you have enough mm -hmm. until later. So I always say if you never use terms like good enough, tomorrow you always have enough. So I like to leave it all there when I work out, and um, that way, no matter what happens later in life, I know it's you know not because of my shortcomings done today. You know those three reps I could have done. Is that the difference of me being successful later? I don't know. That's why I do those three reps, so I never have to wonder what if. Had I start yeah. become a fitness model yeah. by accident? I was Excellent. in the wrong place at the wrong time. I was in a <laughs> hotel lobby after I came back from overseas. Um, I was in the military, and I happened to be the same place as a big convention for. Uh, modeling agencies and stuff, and um, yeah. I was at the hotel and just kind of walked into uh, I don't know, a sea of sharks. And they came up to me, and they go, Hey man, you got a good look, you should try this. And I told them to go fuck themselves, get out of here. And I was in the military, man. I'm like, What's this modeling crap? You know, get, out, get away from me. Um, he gave me his card, uh, I didn't really think much of it. Two weeks later, I'm going to laundry, the card falls out of my pocket. I looked him up, he's a legit guy in New York. I said, Huh, you know, I love working out, you know, I do it for the functional fitness of military and sports. I mean, I'll give it a shot, you know? So I, I never want to wonder what if. So, you know, I take, I take risks with a calculator risk. I never go in blindly. So I did my research, found the guy's legit, went up to New York, did a test shoot. And in that first shoot, we landed the cover of Muscle and Fitness. And what's really cool about it, I was in the military as a, um, um, as a company commander in charge of about 180 guys at the time. And all of a sudden, their, their commander, their leader, their captain pops up on the fitness magazine cover. 
And, um, and they really liked that. You know, it was a cool, it, it built the camaraderie of the union, the cohesion. Um, so with every cover comes like a backstory, and a, a, a feature inside, right? And they take pictures. And one of the pictures they took, and this is like my very first thing, they was, uh, I, was doing, I was on a bench, but I had those really tight shorts on, and they're really tight. And uh, there's this one shot where you can see two nuts in the head. You, know, you see my junk and everything else. And so my soldiers, when this magazine came out, they took that picture and they blew it up like the size of this wall. And they put it in the command hallway. And uh, so I came into work Monday morning, and there's my nuts basically on the wall. And I said, Captain puts peanuts, salted or unsalted. And uh, so we had a lot of laughs with it. And um, it, was just a, it, was a good, it was a good thing. It motivated us, inspired us. We all made fun of it too. We never took it too seriously. And uh, we made the most of it, but you know that's how it all started. Um, you know, people say that's lucky, right place, right time, whatever else. I don't believe in luck. You know, I think luck, true luck, if you really want to know, is um, having a passion, a belief in something that you train and retrain and master and remaster, with no one watching, hoping one day that trained ability that's mastered collides with an opportunity to show it off. That's all luck is, and those opportunities come every single day, and they pass by most people without them even seeing because they're not ready for them. So it's, it's imperative that you train because you believe in it, hoping one day you get to show it off. And when that day arrives, you get, to, you get to explode it into the public. But it's a really sad day when that opportunity does arise and you're not ready for it because you haven't trained it. So that's why you burn the midnight oil right now. So you never have to wonder later, later in life. Yeah, this expo here, the first one um, in Stockholm, you know, for a first year venue, what a success. I mean, you guys hit a grand slam here. Um, the energy, the excitement, the uh, collective nature of everyone coming here on a positive nature and doing, you know, about fitness and, and just cohesion and, and just bettering themselves. It's, it's really electric here. Um, everyone I talked to was inspired to be here. Um, the events, the show, where people are winning something and starting new careers and new possibilities. Everyone came here thinking whatever, and they left believers that they, they can be better, you know? And that's successful, and it's, I don't know, 50, 60,000 people um, coming through here, and it was, it was just great to be part of it, and it was a true honor, so. You guys, are on, you guys have got something good here. The most awesome thing I've ever experienced, yeah. I hope, is still to come, you know? Right. I think our greatest, uh, I, it's sad when people look um, in the past for their greatest moment. I think they should work hard in, in knowing their greatest moment's about to be. Um, the past is wonderful, you're proud of it, and you respect it, it's, it's made you who you are now. Even the failures, they've all made you strong enough to be this person now, to, to embark on the opportunity about to come. Um, my greatest moments are probably the moments where I hit rock bottom, where everything was against the wall, where I failed, and I um, had to find intestinal fortitude, when no one around, and pick my ass up, and reface what knocked me down, this time beating it. It's those moments in life that really build a character. It's not the titles, it's not when the crowds are cheering, it's when no one's cheering, who are you? Those, the, those, those failures that learn, you learn so much, that most people are scared about. Um, you know, most people have fears and they never face them. Uh, I'm one that likes to chase fears, but I think right behind fear that you self-create is a person you always want to be. It's scary and it's hard to face your fears, but once you face them, it rewards you with um, an invincibility, a confidence beyond belief. So um, my greatest hour, I hope, is to come. I think I'm just touching the tip of the iceberg right now. Um, but uh, you know, it's been a good ride so far. Very first photo shoot for Iron Man magazine, um, I was pretty much unknown. It was Mike Nevue, who was a photographer um, in, in Los Angeles. And he worked with a guy out of New York. Um, I forget his name at the time. But they were talking, set up shoots between the two of each other. Anyway, I wanted to get a shoot with them and um, I didn't know how to get in and I was just starting out and, and he didn't know me. So I called me, I, I called a writer and, um, and I, I wrote an article and then we submitted it to New York. And, uh, and then I called Iron Man in LA. I got their number and uh, I pretended, I lied. I pretended to be New York. So hey, we've got this great article, this guy Greg Plitt, you know, we need a cover shoot and a whole story to go with it. Set it up, here's his number, give him a call. And uh, they go, all right, we'll get on it. Anyway, so they called me then. And I go, yeah, I'm available this time. Anyway, so when I showed up for the shoot that I basically created, I wrote a story, submitted it bullshitly, then I acted as New York calling in LA, setting up saying, we need to get this guy booked, get him booked right away because he's busy. Then it was me, and then they called me. Um, I show up there and Mike Nevy's like, man, who the fuck are you? I don't even know who you are. Why, why am I shooting you? 
Um, so he was like, this is a waste of my time. But when he saw me and saw me in shape, he goes, no, let's shoot. And we shot and we hit a cover and a great story. And we've been, we've been friends ever since. Um, I don't think I've ever told him that story though. And, uh, <laughs> but that's how, I, that's how I first got it. That's how I got in the door. You know, it's like, you know, you can't go through life and someone says no, I'll say okay and stop. You've got to keep going until someone says yes or until you go around it or over it or under it. You, you can never allow uh, failure to stop you. Or the first, I mean, if that's how everyone did it, Thomas Edison, who created these lights, 1,093 tries. They failed every single time, 1,093 times before it actually lit. His perseverance got him through that. And out there, when people are starting this thing, they, they're trying and someone says no and they just lose all motivation. It can't be that way because in the world of life of success, there's people with great genetics that go far, people with great, great potential that go far, but the people that go the furthest are the people with the greatest belief and the perseverance to continue to get up and to get knocked down. Um, so you always try and even if you fail, you try and fail and you try and fail and you try and fail, ensuring you never fail to try because um, nothing's really impossible. It really isn't. Just the spelling of impossible. If you look at it, it's spelled um, possible. What do you think about the Iron Man magazine? Um, I, you know, I've, I've been around for about 10 years with Iron Man, you know. It, it's, um, it's founded in me, you know. It's, 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 it's more than a magazine. It's people, you know. And, um, and it's great people. And it's different countries. And it's worldwide known. It's a household name. And it's an honor to be part of it. Um, so, uh, I think all relationships, business and everything else, are nothing more than relationships. It's not about the money or anything else, it's about the networking of people. And with Iron Man, I've always I've been blessed with good people, uh, good photographers, good stories, um, good material put out there that really helps to inspire thousands and hundreds of thousands of strangers to be better than, than where they are right now. So it's a, it's, it's a positive, um, happy, go lucky kind of job I get to have, and, and it's, it's an honor to have. Could you tell us a little more about your um, your website, your membership? Uh, yeah, I've uh, um, I've gone through a lot in uh, my life um, with the military and sports, and I've seen a lot. Um, a lot of what I'm saying to you is is what I put through on our website, gregplit.com. It's got um, over 400 hours of information, answering the hardest questions, not just about the gym, but outside of the gym, how to live your life, how to overcome adversity, how to transform your body, but also transform your confidence and your mentality, um, and. Um, you know, from video blogs, even from cooking se sections, to behind the scenes on covers and movies and photo shoots, um, to day in the life construction and things I do every day, and then a barrage of workouts you've never seen. So um, it's been an honor to have that site, um, you know, 20 plus thousand members, and, and they all like, you know, the greatest thing isn't about any kind of financial return. It really isn't. It's when I come to these expos, um, and uh, somebody's been on the site, right? and. Uh, and they come up to me, they wait in a line, three hours, whatever it is, they wait in line, just to tell me thank you. They go, you changed my life. You know, I lost 100 pounds. Or even the stories I like even better, they go, um, I went back to school and got my degree. Or you know what, I decided to start paying child support. You know, I became the person, a role model, an example. I quit heroin addiction. I was able to kick my cocaine habit. You know, when you see the zest, this love in their eyes, this fire, and you had an impact with that. So it really re-motivates me, and it's funny because, you know, my website is a weird relationship. It's just like me and a computer. It's kind of eerie, you know. It's not until I come to these expos that people wait, give their own time to come say thank you. That gives validity and value to my work, and it re-motivates me. And they're always saying thank you, Greg. Thank you, Greg. And it's me thanking them because without them, I wouldn't have the luxury and and, and the blessing to have such an impact and, and have a fulfilled life, you know. Um, and, you know, I'm very lucky that my work is something I love to do every day. Um, you look at people like Steve Jobs or Warren Buffett, the billionaires, right? They say they've never worked a day in their life because they love what they do. And the people out there, the memberships and, and the fans, allow me to have that same mentality that I don't go to work ever. I, I, I love what I do. That's awesome. Thanks. Cool. Thanks. All right, man.